Colour in Your Life is proudly sponsored by Hobbycraft stores across the UK. For more information, go to hobbycraft.co.uk. G'day viewers, my name's Graham Stevenson and I'd like to invite you to come on a journey of creativity and learning and adventure through the series Colour in Your Life. There's an artist in every family throughout the world and lots of times there's an artist deep down inside all of us as well. So grab your kids, your brothers, your sisters, your aunties, uncles and mums and dads and come and see how some of the best artists do what they do. Okay folks, how are you? Well, welcome to the mountains of Snowdonia in Wales. Fantastic to be here, colouring your life, crossing the oceans and coming to the UK with the help of some fantastic people over here. But I specifically do have to thank Hobbycraft, the organisation that basically has art and craft shops right across the United Kingdom. They have stepped up to the plate uh, through Ian Walton and Leon Bowen and have put together a series of fantastic artists for us to come over and start the series in the United Kingdom. We really appreciate what they've done and it's enabled us to be able to start the series in the UK. And as you can see, some fantastic places. Uh, we're visiting some amazing artists and it's because of this company that we've been able to do this. So Hobbycraft, thank you, A1, and we really, really appreciate it. I went into one of the stores of the 89 that are located across the UK and met up with the management of the Chester store. Hobbycraft have a huge variety of products, well over 25,000. And not only do they sell some of the best brands, they also conduct workshops and art competitions across all of their stores. The range of art supplies is extensive, from oils to acrylics, watercolours, pencils, easels, and a huge range of ready-made canvases as well. Whether you are a novice or a professional artist, Hobbycraft is there to advise and assist, not just the individual artist, but art groups of all kinds right across the UK. Their mission is to inspire and encourage the passion and pleasure that the creative mind can be. Drop in and say hi and catch up with the team at hobbycraft.co.uk. Well, hi viewers and welcome back to Colour in Your Life. Well, we are in the United Kingdom, Great Britain, and it's fantastic to be here. I mean, what an amazing country. And we're actually down in Cornwall today in a gallery called the Stowe Gallery uh, in St. Ives. It's a beautiful little, I suppose it's a medieval town to, to describe it at the best. Little tiny streets, cobblestones everywhere. It's absolutely magnificent. The town is full of galleries too, by the way. And we're actually with the owner and the artist that we're going to be with today, Mr. Paul Stowe. Paul. Welcome to uh, St. Ives. Thank you, buddy. Yeah, thank you for coming all this way. Just a beautiful place. Now, Paul's got a really interesting past with the simple fact that he actually started out as an executive and as a quality control manager for many years, traveling the world. And it was really with a number of big companies like Ford and Jaguar uh, and Lotus as well. Uh, tell me a little bit about that and the way that you transitioned into this amazingly fantastic super realist, or you, know, you hate the word, it's called <laughs> hyper realism. It's sort of driving nuts, does it? Uh, it? It is what it is, I guess. I mean, yeah. It's realism at the end of the day, you know, how hyper it is or so, you know, that's up to the, the viewer more than, than myself to say that. But yeah, yeah. no, I, I, I work for a lot of big, big multinational companies, which caused me to travel an awful lot and, uh, you know, working those seven days a week and everything else. I was sitting in a lounge in, in Schiphol, mm -hmm. um, watching everyone pounding to their keyboards and shouting down their phones, and I thought, there's got to be more to life than this. Absolutely. And uh, pencils are what I've loved, and I've loved them all my life, and I thought, well, why not? Give it a go, see what you can do with it. And when I say Paul works with a pencil, he actually does these images that you're going to see today with an 8B pencil. They are quite extraordinary. So but we're going to discuss more about your past and what you do. And we're going to see some of this great work. Paul has a studio at the back that we're going to go to now and um, reset up the cameras and let's go for a ride on this because you're going to, you're going to find this absolutely amazing, honestly. Now, uh, we're going to start on the, the piece. Now, what you've got there is you've got one that you've reasonably started. And because the fact that you take such a long time to do these, I mean, there's many tens of hours that are put into these pieces, 
you're actually going to do it in three stages today. So you've prepared some stuff so that the people can actually see you go along with this. The equipment that you use, I mean, generally artists have just tons of stuff. You have three. <laughs> can you tell me what they are? Yeah, I'd really like to get back to basics with it. I mean, I just use three little implements. One, a blender. Two, a small eraser that I try and use. And the third one, the most important one, is a pencil. I try to keep to one pencil. This is an 8B by Faber-Castell. Um, I find their pencils are really soft, they blend really well, and they don't leave too much residue on the paper if you need to take a bit residue off as well. So, And that's as simple as it gets really, just, just those three implements. And what about the paper you've got there? The paper is a, a Bristol Board Smooth. Um, this is uh, a non-branded paper. Um, and it doesn't really matter. I tend to use an oversized paper, and you'll see why, just so I get a little bit of room around there as well. Uh -huh. So what I tend to do is I will draw, draw the, uh, the image quite loosely, um, using sort of very quick pencil strokes. And then what I'll look to start to do is to start to tighten that pencil up by making some more precision soaks, and also look at where I need some darker shading, some lighter shading. So we have an outline here of a drawing. I'll start to look at, at, at tightening all those strokes up, and bringing, it, and bringing the drawing all back together to make it a, a very detailed drawing. Now, as far as the images that you use, uh, do you get them off the net or do you take photos yourself? How do you go about that? There's a wide variety of, um, of sources for, for images. Um, I'll use my own camera. I love photography and uh, it teaches us so much about composition as well. You can take your own photos. Some of the photos are more complex or all the drawings I do are more complex. So I will use photo sharing services like uh, Shutterstock, for example. Always important to uh, either purchase the rights to the, uh, the photo, which I've done with this one, or at least to get the permission from the uh, photographer to use it. In my experience, every single photographer I've spoke to has always given permission to make a drawing. Tell me more about the time that you were sitting in an airport and obviously being uh, an executive, a quality control executive, flying around the world, working for a number of various companies. Uh, you just got to the stage one day where you just said, this, this isn't working for me anymore. Yeah, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, that kind of life. It was just that uh, I'd been doing it for a long time. Um, and, you know, uh, you tend to miss all the birthdays, your, your kids' presentations, the, the school plays and so on. And I'm sitting there looking at all these people sort of uh, doing what I'd been doing for 20 years. And I thought, you know, there's more to life than this. There's got to be more to life. And, I, wake, I was waking up in the morning thinking about the next drawing, or the one that I was working on, and I thought, well, that must be, that's a calling, that must be something that I need to be doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm never happier in it than when I am in front of my easel, uh, or my board in this case, um, drawing. It's, it's just something that uh, I, I'm passionate about now, I absolutely love doing. So how do you find having a, a lovely wife? Um, literally, this girl's been in your life since you were kids as well love of your life, I mean both of you being artists in the one family, how does that work? Well, one of the, the key reasons for me actually drawing is my wife's a painter okay. and two painters in the house, so I don't <laughs> think that's a good idea, so <laughs> it was always a case of I'll, I'll do black and white, let her do the colour. Yeah. Um, but no, it's, it's great because we, we feed off each other, um, we bounce ideas off, off uh, new compositions or new techniques or new ideas and uh, we're, we're pretty critical to each other as well so mm -hmm. you know she'll tell me she doesn't like something that I'm doing and, and vice versa and uh, I think that helps the whole sort of development of you as an artist as well yeah. when you have someone that you trust and you, you you can listen to their feedback and it's not biased by anything else so it works really well. That's fantastic. All right Paul because your work takes so long and you've been so gracious to uh, do a couple of these for us what we'll do now is we'll transit to the, the second piece because there's some techniques in there that I know that you want to show, sure. uh, show folks and you'll see the real meat of, uh, of what Paul does within this next piece. It, it's getting to the stage where you, know, you can even see dimples, pimples and hairs uh, on these faces. It's, it's quite amazing. So we'll translate over to the next one and be right back. Okay, well we'll pop the second drawing up. And uh, you were saying before that you like to give yourself these little rewards when you're doing such a complex piece. Explain a little reward to me. Okay, so what, what, what um, it'll take me a long time to uh, shade this area, for example. There'll be, you know, I'll go over that two or three times and I'll, I'll explain the shading in a little bit. Um, but that might take two or three hours just to get this one area here to, to how I like it to make sure the tone's right. So after that three hours and your fingers are hurting, you want to sort of, it's a fairly dull area, that bit of the cheek, so I can see a nice water drop down here. 
I'm thinking, yeah, I really, that's a real focal point for the whole drawing. I want to get that one done just to G me up to get him to do a nice big piece down here as well that's going to take a few hours. So, yeah, um, yeah there's a lovely water drop here um, that's just dropping off her, off her lips. So I'm just going to be looking at, okay, how can I get this one finished and how can I uh, turn myself back onto the drawing? Yeah. So with the with the detail, I think it be, will probably become quite cathartic after a while, or even very zen. What do you what do you think about when you disappear in one of these drawings? I'm still thinking about what I'm doing. To be honest with you, I don't really have that um, automatic zone yet. Um, maybe that'll come in, in in the years as they go by. But I'm still thinking about you know well, how does this piece interact with this piece? Do I need to keep that clean? Do I need to shade that piece? Um, what 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 next piece am I going to do? You know. Have I got a sweaty hand that's going to make a nice palm print yeah. on the paper? These kind of things. So yeah. it's all about the drawing, I have to be honest with you. But that's the reason that you actually use either the silk cloth or the piece of paper. Yeah, I, I tend to do that. I want to make sure that the, the viewers can see what I'm drawing today, mm -hmm. but uh, I would always have something under my hand mm -hmm. just to make sure that you don't get any palm print on there or sweat on there or anything like this. It'd be surprising as soon as you get something on the paper. The, the, the drawing can be ruined, it just, it just comes through. So yeah. you have to be very careful about what you put on there. And you really do consider yourself as a, as a purist pencil artist. You don't use graphite powder or charcoal or black paper. I mean, it's white and the pencil. Yeah, it's a little bit strange, really. Um, I, guess, I guess it's one of those things that, I, you know, to explain what you do, you know, if you start to use complex materials or complex products, it, it all becomes mixed media and falls into a, a whole new grouping. I'm pencil and paper and that's it, you know, it's, uh, it's a little bit strange because I'm sure I could help myself by using different materials, but mm -hmm. I don't know, it's something I've, I've said that's the way I'm going to do it and that's the way I've always done it. Fair enough. So what I'm doing now is I'm just using the, the, the edge of the blender, it's a clean blender, just using that to just push the material around the paper. Um, and what that does is gives it a lovely sort of translucent effect. And you can start to see already that uh, this is forming into a little bit of a water drop. There's no, there's no right or wrong with water. I mean, you know, as long as you've got your sort of um, refractions right, so if anything's passing through it, that it sort of twists it a little bit. Mm -hmm. There's no right or wrong, really. It's just really about getting some nice smooth edges on there and some nice graduation between the darks and the lights. It's the details that you draw that most people never notice. Yeah. But those details are what makes the drawing at the end of the time actually look realistic or not. And, and some people will try, or you could try and actually um, avoid all the hard work and not put those details in because you think, well, people are never going to notice that pore or they're never going to notice that small hair. But actually, it's the overall thing, we'll, we'll suffer for it. Yeah. So by putting all those in there, you know, it'll make the final piece look much better. Absolutely. So all I'm using a technique here called um, a circular technique. Um, so all I'm doing there is creating tiny little circles all around the drawing, all around this, uh, this bottom line here. And what that does is it gives an unevenness. Um, so rather than if, you, if I just sort of put strokes in with a pencil, mm -hmm. you end up with a very flat surface. Whereas the circles, and what you'll see is I'll blend these in in, the mo in a moment, they create a very um, uneven and the, tone, the tones will, will be um, sort of very varied. Mm -hmm. So I'll just do a small section there and then I'll use a blender. Sure. Um, and what I'll do is I'll just, just blend all those circles in, not, not fully, but just, just blend them in there to take away their edges. And then I'll use my little eraser. It's a very, very small diameter eraser. Um, and then I'll just do the same, same thing, circular movements, just over the top. So what I'm doing here is I've, I've put some material on, I'm taking some material off, uh, I'll blend this again, and I might do this four or five times. And what that does is create a little bit of depth, because you don't want it completely flat, mm -hmm. and it'll, it'll, create that, um, it'll create that unevenness that, that, that the skin has. And I use that as a base. So now when you, you paint, um, you have a base. So this will be the base to, to the drawing, and I'll just build upon that. So if I need to go lighter, I'll use the eraser. If I need to go darker, I'll add a bit more graphite. I mean, I really like the wet series of, of the girls with the water on their face. Yeah, I, I, the series didn't start out as a series, really, of, uh, of wet drawings. What, what I found is that um, I really wanted to push myself as hard as possible with what can be done with pencil. And I guess the, uh, the, uh, the one goal that we all try to do as pencil artists is water. 
Um, how can you create something that looks soft and, and gentle and, and wet with a simple pencil? Mm. So it was more about the, the technical difficulty, I guess, and the, I think the artistic difficulty of drawing water. Um, that plus portraits, because I love portraits. Mm -hmm. Those two mixed together just, just work perfectly for, for, for graphite drawing. Yeah, they're amazing. Okay, so one of the um, the main tools that I said I use, I try and only use uh, the three different implements, if you like, is the eraser. So I've just, just added a little bit of uh, graphite onto that area. I'll uh, blend that graphite in. So it's quite flat now, as you can see, I'll put a little bit of curve in there, so there's a bit of a darker edge there. When I started drawing, that'll be good enough, that'll be uh, of how I wanted it. But if you just use the eraser, you can just sort of then just start to really bring that to life by. A bit of a low light underneath that bit there, a low light under there, and then you can just try and start creating some, some textures on there. I was an expat for a long time. I lived in China for just over 12 years. Mm -hmm. And you, you sort of, I don't know, you know, you sort of have a couple of things that you can do while you're an expat because the gardening's taken care of for you, you know, the, the, the decorating's taken care of for you. You know, my wife is a painter, as, a, as I've mentioned, and um, I didn't really want to go into painting, um, although she could give me some help. So I just thought, well, you know, pencil, paper, and I started drawing, drawing, drawing my, uh, my daughter, particularly. Mm -hmm. And it all started from there, really. And, you pick up tools and techniques from programs like, like this and mm -hmm. from YouTube and, and you just pick up little snippets but the, the, the biggest tool that you can ever get is just to try it and just to have that practice yourself. Yeah, yeah, have a, have a go. Mm. So all I'm doing here is um, just adding graphite and then taking it back off, adding a bit more graphite, low lights, high lights, trying to create a different tone there just to see if I can create a little bit of uh, texture but also a little bit of uh, depth mm -hmm. and um, and, and 3D effect to the, the overall lips there. So there's a little bit of darkness here, which sort of, as he bends in, and then bringing the light out to the top as well. So again, you'll see I'll go over a lot of the work many, many times. Yeah. And it just helps provide a lot more depth. Maybe it's indecision by me as well, but until I'm really comfortable with the way that something's gonna look, I wanna just, you know, I, I can do this. I can just take it on, take it off, put more on, and just work with the piece until I'm really happy. And you've also done some really beautiful nudes as well, um, figure studies. That are, I mean, you can actually see the texture on the girl's skins, it's fantastic. I guess the traditional way of going through any sort of um, art education, which I, I didn't have, mm -hmm. was the figure life. Um, still life and, and mm -hmm. figure drawing is, 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 a, is a key part of that. Yeah. Uh, I never did that. Um, and I, you know, understanding the, the, the human anatomy must be, and it, and it is a key part of uh, any art form. Mm -hmm. So I decided to do a series of drawings where, trying to, trying to show emotion without, trying to, without showing facial features. So you'll notice that all of the drawings, there's no, you can't see the face, um, there's no shadows, mm -hmm. there's no backgrounds, there's not even any floor in there. And the idea is purely to try to, try to understand what their expression is, what they're going through, just from the pose that they're in. Mm -hmm. um, but from, from, from my learning point of view, it was a great way of learning about skin textures yeah. and, and shading and, uh, and using some of the things I'm trying to show you now mm -hmm. into actually creating unevenness because our skins are not smooth, they're not completely the same colour. There are you know, little imperfections in there that uh, make us all human. Mm. Well, you've made some fantastic progress there, Paul, but as we did say when we started that you've got one that's almost completed but there are some things that you would like to change in that and once again because it takes you a very long time to do these we're going to translate over to that one and then uh, the folks can really see the amount of incredible time and effort that you put into these pieces. Okay, that'd be great I'm, I'm really trying to sort of uh, explain how I do things as well mm -hmm. um, and I'm more than happy to answer people's questions if they want to know how we've trans transitioned from one to the other mm. um, and, and to you know really share some learning and some techniques with them yeah. um, if they're not getting enough from what we're doing because I know it's difficult I'm with sure the, the that time that we have. People just need to contact me on www.stow.gallery. Beautiful. Alright Paul, well we've put the, the third one up of the, uh, the series that you've done and it's 
There's a few things that you need to do to finish off this, and what are they? Well, I guess, I guess you're never happy with the piece, um, and you could carry on forever, uh, but you have to draw a line at some stage. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm fairly happy with what I've got to so far, and, and really just the final touches are a little bit maybe of, uh, it's to try to bring out those bubbles a little more, so just a few highlights. Mm -hmm. um, so first of all, I just take, I'm gonna take a, an 8B pencil, and just lose a bit of this light air, just to soften it all and put it back into darkness, really. Um, and and a good technique for doing for having a look at your work is take a photograph. Yeah. Take a photograph, print it out, whatever you can do on a piece of paper, and then just look at it in, in isolation as well. I'm just going to use the eraser again, just to just to pick up some some bright spots, just mm -hmm. to make those those little droplets of water just sparkle a little bit. Yep. So your own gallery and your studio in your own gallery. Um, that was a, a big, life-changing alteration for you as far as the corporate world is concerned. So, but how do you feel about it now as you've gone through that transition? Well, it, it couldn't be far more far removed from, from what I was doing previously, to be honest with you. you know, um, my budget is a lot smaller, my overheads are a lot smaller. Um, and I guess, you know, in terms of management, I look after myself. So it has been a massive transition. Um, but you know, I would never, I wouldn't turn the clock back. It's been an absolutely incredible journey. When you find that piece in life where you really enjoy something, just go for it. You know, and, and I get the ability now to draw every single day. Living the dream, we call yeah, it. Absolutely, <laughs> living the dream. All I'm missing is a Harley. <laughs> <laughs> it's, we'll get you a black Vespa. <laughs> you mightn't do as much damage if that's the case. So from 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 my point of view, and I'm I'm you know happy to. Uh, do some changes if you think they're necessary, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much done here, I think. I think, uh, yeah, I could spend another 20 hours on it, but, uh, you know, I've got to know when to quit, and I think that's, that's about as good as it gets. So. I think it's amazing work, and I think everybody that's out there watching is, is uh, being witness to a man that really has an, an incredible talent when it comes to a pencil and a rubber. <laughs> so that will, that will give you an idea what can be achieved uh, if you really, really put your patience and your mind into it, but that was fantastic. Thank you, Graham. Much appreciated. Well, a great day in the UK, in St Ives in Cornwall. That was pretty cool, pal. Paul. Thank you, Graham. Thank you for leading us into your beautiful studio and the gallery as well. The gallery is a fantastic gallery. Now, if anybody wants to come and see you if they're down in the Cornwall area, what's your website again? Well, the website is www.stow.gallery. So no.com, no.uk, just .gallery. And we're based in St Ives. Most people in the UK or visiting the UK will find St Ives, the most beautiful place in the world, outside of Australia, of course. It's very pretty, it really is. It's, it's beautiful. And the old cobblestones, they've got the second oldest pub in the UK yeah. here. It's 700 years old down the road and then really is a magnificent area. So if you want to put a great artist on your bucket list in a beautiful area, I would suggest you come here. We've just started the UK side of things. We're very excited about it and we think it's going to expand incredibly well across this country with all of the amazing people that are dealing with us. You can come and see us always at our Facebook page and in YouTube, ever expanding in there as well, and also at colourinyourlife.com.au. But uh, we're going to continue our journey around this, uh, this beautiful country and go and see some more people. But until we see you guys again, remember, as always, in the UK, remember, make sure you put some colour in your life. See you guys. Bye now.